<laughs> Maggie? My kindergarten class is collecting money for the homeless. Give till it hurts. <laughs> Here's a ticket stub, nickel, and... Here's some lint. What a sport. <laughs> hey, you're wearing Mom's earring. Uh, yeah, and if she finds out you're a freak, so don't tell her, all right? Give me a dollar. A dollar? Cough it up, or I'll sing like a canary. Extortionist. Aren't we touchy? <laughs> Maggie, don't tell Mom and Dad that I was crying, okay? Give me a dollar. <laughs> I only have 11 cents. Dead beat. <laughs> Tucker saw Mommy's earring and Corey was crying. <laughs> Uh, Maggie, hold it right there. Why was Corey crying? I don't know. I make it a practice never to get involved. <laughs> oh, Ed, I know Corey would be upset about this whole funeral thing. I'm sad he didn't even know my great uncle. I barely knew the guy. Oh, I'm sure he was a great man. I wish the boys could have met him. They will today. <laughs> Candy, I really think we shelter those boys too much. Well, the last time we tried to be progressive, Tucker went to that heavy metal concert and came back with a pierced ear and a bone in his hair. Hey, Candy, he was just expressing himself. Ed, our son came home looking like Wilma Flintstone. <laughs> uh, look, look, if you really think that this funeral is going to be too upsetting for them, then they don't have to go. Okay. Hey, hey, are we going to get to see the body? <laughs> <laughs> Tucker, you look like you got dressed in a blender. Ed, he's just expressing himself. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, well, what exactly is it you're trying to express? Uh, grief? Well, it worked. You are giving us grief. <laughs> Tucker, now you know we've never stifled your individuality. We, we let you spike your hair, pierce your ear. Dress like a prehistoric woman. <laughs> now go upstairs and change your clothes, because we're leaving here in five minutes. <sighs> Talk about your mood swings. And, uh, by the way, Tucker, there's a bracelet that goes with those earrings. Actually, it looks better on him than it does on you. Morning. Oh, sweetheart, if the funeral's gonna be too upsetting for you, then you don't have to go. You can stay home with Maggie and Mrs. Travelloni. It's not the funeral. Well, then what is it, Corey? You, you look like you lost your best friend. I lost my best friend. Jimmy Stevenson and his family are moving away. Oh, no, pal. Corey, you can still be friends with Jimmy. A, a little distance won't hurt your friendship. You can always visit Jimmy, and you can call him on the phone as often as you like. They're moving to Tokyo. Harvey Brownstein across the street seems like a nice kid. <laughs> Mom, he plays a tuba and picks wax out of his ears. <laughs> What's wrong with everybody? Well, Jimmy Stevenson's moving to Tokyo. Well, cheer up, you guys. We're going to a funeral today. Bang! <laughs> we are gathered here today to mourn the passing of that great vaudeville star and legendary ventriloquist, Jackie Brannigan. <laughs> He's a friend who is near and dear to each and every one of us here at the Variety Arts Club. <laughs> and you made me put on a tie for this? What are you complaining about? I'm wearing a Calvin Klein, and the woman sitting next to me is wearing a chicken we suit. We all remember that. <laughs> It was a shock to all of us that Jackie Brannigan died so suddenly. Who died suddenly at the age of 99? <laughs> this is no fun. Where's the body? <laughs> it's a memorial service. Shh. Yeah, but you promised me a body. <laughs> if you don't be quiet, you're going to be the body. Shh. Yes. <laughs> no matter how many times a week we gather here, 
Our pain has never lessened. You got three minutes left. Bingo starts in here at noon. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Comac. Someday you'll go far. And I hope to stay there. <laughs> And now to pay tribute to Jackie Brannigan, I'd like to call upon his dear friend, an artist he respected and admired, the great vaudeville star, Jackie Jackson. Oh. <laughs> okay. Brannigan would love to see her do this. <laughs> well, let's see, where was I here? Two minutes! Thank you, Mrs. Comac. We accept you for what you are. Punishment from God. <laughs> well, now, I understand Jackie Brannigan's only surviving relatives are here. Perhaps one of you would come up here and share your memories, reflect on his greatness, or do an impression of a farm animal. <laughs> what are you going to say? I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to say something. No. Oh, come right up here, young man. <laughs> I didn't know my great, great uncle, but I do know what it's like to lose a friend. I just lost one myself. Oh, he didn't die or anything bad like that. He just moved away. But what I don't understand is how you accept the fact that someone special to you is gone for good. Who's oh, that? Initial here. Uh, hey, aren't you gonna help me bring it inside? <laughs> Where'd this come from? I don't know. But I think we can rule out Bloomingdale's. It's from the executor of your great uncle's estate to the Edward Brannigan family as the only living relatives Jackie Brannigan bequeaths unto you all of his worldly possessions. What are we waiting for? <laughs> Wait, hold it, hold it. This is just like a movie I saw. A family gets a trunk delivered, they open the lid, and they all become the gatekeepers to hell. <laughs> Get out of here! Oh, yeah. Come on, Cory, aren't you curious? Oh. 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 That who were Brannigan and Buzz? Oh, you know, that was your great, great uncle's ventriloquist act. But one day at the height of their fame, the act broke up, but nobody ever knew why. Maybe huh. this has something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you reading, Tuck? Oh, uh, just some old magazines. By that old dog. Look at Miss January 1908. <laughs> what a fantastic pair of shoes. <laughs> Stupid old junk. In the world? Ah, uh, who cares anyway? <laughs> 